who's here in attendance, all those in our virtual public gallery and um, all the members here in attendance. Um, can I hand over to Maura to take us through the role? Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, members. You're hereby summons to the Planning Committee um, on Wednesday, the 2nd of December. Councillor Jason Barr. Councillor Jason Barr. I'll come back. Councillor John Boyle. Here. Thank you. And that's me here as well. That was Jason. It's John here. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Boyle. Thank you, Jason Barr. Alderman Alan Breslin. Here. Here. Thank you. Councillor Angela Dobbins. Councillor Angela Dobbins. I'll come back to Angela. Councillor Paul Gallagher. Thank you, Paul. Councillor Sean Harkin. Here. Thank you, Sean. Councillor Christopher Jackson. Sure. Councillor Dan Kelly. Sure, Mark. Thank you, Dan. Alderman Keith Kerrigan. Here. Thank you, Keith. Alderman Hilary McClintock. Here, Maura. Thank you, Hilary. Councillor Keir Maguire. Sure, Maura. Councillor Philip McKinney. I can see Philip's on. Councillor Philip McKinney. I'll come back to Philip so make sure he's there. Councillor Aileen Mellon. No the apologies for Aileen. Um, she All right. may be able to make it. Um, Councillor Sean Mooney. Here, Maura. Thank you. I'll just run back, members, just bear with me. Um, Councillor Angela Dobbins. Still no. Okay. And Councillor Philip McKinney. I can see Philip is on, but he's just not answering his... Maybe he's having problems. Okay. Okay. That's thanks. great. Thank you. Thanks, Maura. Um, members, I only read out the statement for remote meetings. Um, I'd like to remind everyone who is in remote attendance that this meeting will be broadcast live via Council's YouTube channel and will also be available for viewing by the public and the media. The broadcast will also be available. I'm here, Maura. The broadcast will be available for repeated viewing at a later date. Well, go ahead. I'm on a meeting here. Um, the, the broadcast may be terminated or suspended in accordance with council protocol. Members and approved speakers are reminded they only have their mics and cameras on when speaking at the meeting and to use the chat facility to highlight a, a request to speak. By participating in the meeting, you're consenting to be informed and to the use and storage of those images for broadcasting or training purposes and for the purpose of keeping historical records and making those records available to the public. A copy of Council's privacy notice may be found on the Council website. Um, so members, I know that most of you are accustomed to that statement, um, but just a further reminder to keep your mics muted. Thank you. Um, we we'll move on, Lady. Any declarations of interest? Is there any declarations of interest for today's meeting? No. Um, if any of the arise, um, can I ask you to declare them as they arise? Um, moving on now to chairperson's business. Um, there's there's a few items that I wish to raise on the chairperson's business. The first of which is the site visits. Um, members, I know there's been correspondence that's um, that was sent round on Monday, and it 
it identifies four planning applications which are currently in the system pending as a result of requests for um, site visits. Now, during the current restrictions, those site visits haven't been able to be organised to date. Um, and I know there's um, our planning department have received a lot of correspondence um, from the interested parties inquiring, inquiring what's happening with those particular applications. I know um, that those requests, a lot of those requests had been made in a completely different climate um, and we've been mindful of the current restrictions. Um, and I just wanted to open up to the floor and ask for members' views on on how we proceed with those um, outstanding visit requests. Members, um, I've spoke to there's there's four request there's four um, applications that are in there um, for site visit requests. They've been circulated on Monday. Um, three of those have been requested by members. One of those requests has been made by the committee. Um, I've been advised that anybody who made a request for a site visit um, would, and and if the committee decide to proceed on the basis that um, the site we can we can we can proceed without a site visit taking place, um, that person who requested the site visit would be ineligible to vote. Um, so. That's with that in mind, one of those applications, um, that site visit, the site visit request had came from the entire committee. So for LA 11 2018 0732, um, for in relation to housing development in Castle Derg, um, it the, the committee, I think we need to proceed on the basis um, of that site visit taking place. So what I'm going to ask, um, and I, I don't want members to declare. At this meeting, but I'm going to ask for anybody who is interested in attending that site visit, um, can they get in contact with our admin team, and that site visit can be arranged. Um, that site uh, with um, that particular site being risk assessed, um, and in accordance with the numbers of people who are expected to attend. So, um, can I ask people to get in touch with an admin team if they want the available of a site visit? For LA 11 2018 0732. Um, the, another, another request is was in relation to a predetermination hearing. Um, now, again, that was that, that during that predetermination hearing, there was um, a determination that the a direction that this committee would require would, would carry the site visit in respect to that application. So again, I'm going to um, assume that that site visit is going to take place. And can I ask anybody who's interested in, take, in, in taking part in that site visit, can they get in touch with um, the admin team? So that application is LA 11 2016 0976F, and it's for the residential development at Ross Bay. Um, the other two applications have been requested by members. Um, I'm going to open that to the floor. Um, to see if see what members' views are on that. Um, the first indicated speaker is Councillor Boy. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just uh, just a couple of questions in relation uh, to the well, in the first instance, the reference to site visits, uh, Chair. Um, of the applications that we had considered for site visits, I mean, you, you referenced that that applicants were were anxious to proceed with without site visits perhaps um have they all expressed that desire or or which ones have and which ones haven't i think that may have some bearing on, on our decision um uh, i think we all will be interested in being as fair as we can the applicants um secondly i am a bit concerned as one who actually asked for a site visit that i would subsequently be disenfranchised from making a decision in relation to it um uh, and and I, I, I wouldn't be particularly keen in that um that direction of travel um albeit i do understand the logic behind it because clearly if i ask for a site visit then that suggests that i want to see the site and i don't know the site well enough to make a decision 
So in that instance, I would be relatively, I suppose, resistant to that idea uh, because I would like to be able to um, be involved in the decision-making process on that one. I don't know how others feel about that, but I'm sure we'll hear about it. Um, and then in relation to carrying out the other side visits um, that we may well uh, wish to attend, what would be the transport arrangements for something like that? Um, I can think of two or three on this committee, for example, who don't drive, including myself. Um, uh, and, uh, and not clearly in the past, we've all had to travel together. So three questions on one statement, I suppose. That's just my view. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Boyle. And just, just packing up on, on one aspect of your question in relation to members being disenfranchised. Um, I, I I agree um, completely with that sentiment. So, but it it, it in the same token, um, we do need to identify it as an option. Um, if if we if the committee agree, they go ahead with without a site visit, um, and then ultimately that's what we're um, that 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 would would be the end result. But um, in the same vein, um, uh, these site visit requests are still there, um, and to carry out a site visit is still an option. So I'm just I'm just identifying that at this stage. But can I bring more in? So you may be able to provide some clarity in your answers to your questions. Just the first point, Chair, is that it's really um, a matter for members. The site visit is for members to equip themselves with more information as they feel necessary in order to assess the site to help them make a judgment in regard to the decision making process. So that's the fundamental um, reason. So um, I just want to highlight that a material of where there might be another view on that, um, but it's entirely a member's um, view in terms of, of where they sit in terms of each site what what we're trying to do is identify the number um councillor boyle the number of of maybe um individuals on the committee that require the feel they still require a site visit and then we will have to risk assess each site and then consider how best that we deal with the 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 situation of of, of carrying out that from the beginning to the end so at this point what the chair is trying to do is look at what is an option and find out whether or not um, there's potential solutions on and around that. But officers are obviously going to respond to that. But we will need to do a risk assessment in each situation. OK, thank you. So supplementary to that then, uh, the other question that, that I was asking was which, which applications, which applicants are, are more insistent or are insistent in pushing ahead with outside visits? There are ones listed there. Which of those are, are they all looking for? The option of forgetting about the site visit. I think it's important that it's members who need to decide whether they need to um, visit the site in order to make a, a robust decision. Um, so I, I, I just, apart from you know, clearly that's a matter for the individuals. But um, I think we need to make sure that we're we're processing the application. And, and carrying out due process, so it's it's important that members reflect on this. Some material of what, as I said in earlier, you know what people might perceive as as a requirement or not. It is a requirement if members feel they can't make a decision without seeing the site. If there's yeah. enough, if there's enough members to make the decision, again, that's something that the chair um, would want to consider. So we're just trying to explore the situation, but it's really based around members' views on it. Okay, um, thanks, Maura. And you're you're a hundred percent right. Um, in, in anything in relation to the decision making process, it's members. Um, that the the, the the player is completely in members' hands in terms of um what direction we go in terms of making of, of having all the relevant information in order to take the relevant decision in relation to um applicants making um, inquiries and I know um, I because it, because it, it hasn't brought to my attention that um, our planning department have been 
have been in receipt of requests um, and queries in relation to these outstanding applications. Um, I'm going to invite um, Eamon to come in and maybe provide some clarity because, Councillor Boyle, I'm in the same position as yourself and um, I, I'm not allowed, to, not permitted to speak to any of the applicants in relation to an LA planning application. So um, I believe that a lot of those discussions have been coming through, Eamon. So I'm going to invite Eamon to see if he um, can shed some light on the Applications of the applications that have been that are outstanding at the moment, um, particularly the the two applications on that one on Ardmore Road and one on the the Valley Grill Road in Eglinton. Um, Eamon? you're on mute. My apologies, members, chair. Um, as the chair said, members, yes, we have been contacted directly by applicants regarding site visits and the delays, um, in particular the Ar Ardmore um, application and the Ross Bay application. Um, uh, the applicant for Ross Bay has indicated that it is impacting on his workforce um, and that he has had to lay some, uh, some workers off. Um, as the chair's probably already indicated, uh, this is a matter that that has been kept on review. Um, and members, I I have um, impressed upon the applicants that the members at every meeting um, since lockdown have considered whether or not it is safe to proceed with member site visits, um, and that they would be doing so today again at at this meeting. Um, but uh, I I think it is fair to. Uh, inform and um, members and let everybody know that um, the applicants as listed, bar one applicant who, as more has indicated, um, one applicant has indicated that that you know he would be content that the application um, was presented without a site visit, but as more has indicated, that is a, a call for members. Um, so that's the position, members. We 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 are constantly being asked by those applicants who um, are on this list, as it were, um, when the site visits were going, are going to take place. Um, happy to take any questions. Thank you, Chair. And the last was Alderman McClendick. Thanks, Chair. And I suppose the conversation has moved on a wee bit there from I put my name into the chat box. Um, I suppose, I suppose, in one sense, the application that I had requested a site visit for, you're saying that site visit will go ahead. But my, in terms of the logic of the person who um, has put in the application not being allowed to take part, I know my logic whenever I put in that uh, request was that all of the committee would benefit from being there. It wasn't particularly just that I wanted to be there because I probably know the area maybe as, as well as others. So there's, you know. When, when we talk about logic, what is the logic of it? Because, I, you know, I did that thinking that would be a benefit to the committee as a whole, but I know that one seems to be proceeding anyway. But, um, and I do realise sort of the position that we're in, we don't want to be delaying these uh, any longer than necessary, but I, I suppose there's a bit of my thinking is that maybe those who requested the site visit maybe should be asked whether or not they feel it's absolutely necessary um you know it might help to clarify the, the situation a wee bit but um uh, of course i'll just leave it until here the views of others um i'm going to uh, there's there's two more indicated speakers and, and hopefully um i'll i'll bring the officers on the end so i'm going to move uh, ask alderman kerrigan Thank you, Chair, for, for letting me in. Chair, I would concur with the remarks by, by uh, Alderman Clampett there in relation to that sort of the point that some of those requests and the site visit would have been more along lines of, you may know the area, but for the benefit of the rest of the committee. But just, it was on the, it was on the relation to the application there in Castle there. I, from my recollection, Chair, I thought it was noted in the applicant's uh, 
documentation that they were requesting planners to come out and see what would be accepted rather than the committee as such uh, requesting that application or a site visit there. I thought it was more the applicant was saying he's put on this app, he's put on for so many houses and put on a couple of different applications and been rejected. It was more the applicant was looking for a site visit, but maybe that's that was just a point there rather than saying that the committee requested it. But just just a wee point, Chair, that's all it was. Thank you. Um, Councillor Kelly. Thanks, Chair. Um, I suppose along the lines of the uh, previous speakers, I, I'm of the opinion that whilst, an app, whilst when an application comes and an individual member um, makes a request to the committee for a site visit, it's done under the terms of the protocol for the operation of the plan. And they have to provide sound planning reasons uh, for that. And um, whilst it comes in as a request from an individual member, the decision is actually a committee decision, uh, not an individual one. So in terms of uh, the previous speakers, um, it is the whole committee that has um, consented a site visit, no matter who the, the, the person um, on the committee is, is uh, requesting. Um, just picking up on, on the previous speakers, uh, I do feel a bit, um, uh, it's, it's not, it doesn't sit comfortably with me in terms of disenfranchising individual members who have made the request when the committee as a collective have consented to the, the particular site visit. And then, in, and then sort of following on from that, I wonder what consideration has been given to the use of technology that may kind of bridge the gap. So instead of having to do a visit, a, a, an actual physical um, site visit, could, uh, for example, the use of technology, like if an officer was to go out and take a short video clip, um, you know, like a 360 of a site or maybe a couple of, or three video clips if, or four, whatever, of a, a larger site um, and circulated that, would that get us over the hurdle then in terms of the, the, the consent through the, the, the protocol, because clearly that's uh, sitting there now that the committee has has consented to these site visits. So we're, we're all kind of collectively sitting there with this decision making, not just the individuals who face being uh, disenfranchised, as, as Councillor Boyle said. Thanks. Okay, um, thank you. Con see, because we've, and then the, the issue of site visits have been constantly under review and been discussed at every um, committee. I'm going to try and bring all the members' comments first before we bring um, the officers in. So, Councillor Gell here, and if there's anybody else who wishes to indicate to speak, can you do so now? Thank you, Chair, for Limson. Chair, it just it seems to be, you know, this it's very contradictory. If, if there's an, an option open to members of planning in order to make a full decision that they request a site visit, but if you request that site visit, then that takes the decision making out of your hands. That just is completely contradictory. So we either have an option of site visits or we don't. You know, you can't it can't it can't work. It can't work like that the decision is removed from me because you request a site visit in order to get the full brief of, of the plan application. It's totally contradictory. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Okay, um, Councillor Boyle. I thank uh, Councillor Gallagher and others actually for recognising that fact. It's clearly it will impact me, me personally in one particular decision. Uh, and clearly I concur with what Councillor Gallagher has just said. It's, a bit, it's actually ridiculous in, in reality. Not, not to be too critical about it, but uh, the irony of, of, of it is, uh, as already outlined indeed by uh, Councillor McClintock as well, is that even though I made the request for the site visit, it was primarily down to the fact that I didn't know the area particularly well that, that I'm looking to visit. But I actually did make that request primarily on behalf of the rest of the members of the committee. The site is on private land. Not one of us will have ever seen it. Um, uh, and I, I, you know, looking at looking at it, I, I just thought it more realistic that we all went along and had a look, or as many of us that could. Uh, uh, have a look, should have a look. I think the way we need to move here, Chair, is we need to get to a point where we now consider options on how we can safely carry out site visits. Um, uh, that's really where we're at. Uh, that, that seems that there's a reluctance here uh, from my fellow okay. uh, committee members to, that, 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 
same visits will do them. In terms of taking it forward, I'll I'll decide on that. Um, but I'll uh, I'm going to hand over to Maura now and answer some of the questions. Thank you. I thought you were coming on with something. Um, with, with, with another point, rather. Well, I really only wanted to support Councillor McClintock, okay. who said she didn't. Maura, Maura, Hello. Yeah. Thanks, Chair. Um, I suppose. Just to be aware, members, we're just obviously at this point trying to go along with the chair. We just wanted to put it back out there in terms of the information. Um, just to be mindful that not it is not mandatory for every member of the planning committee to visit a site before they vote on a planning application. And I think that's important to, to remember because there's often circumstances where we may only have, you know, two or three members of the committee attending a site visit. Sometimes it could be five or six, but that doesn't inhibit the others that felt they had in their own mind. And it's something that, that Philip says regularly. It's the, that members individually have to satisfy themselves um, before they make a decision that they feel that um, they they have sufficient information in order to make that decision. So the site visit is a, is a personal individual experience um, that that they're there and there, there's a potential there to ask officers a question to understand the surroundings and the context that they find themselves in. So that's the purpose of it and it's not a mandatory in order to vote. The reason why there is a, obviously a potential concern, and I think it's important because and Philip can come in after, if somebody has indicated to the committee and in the public domain that they felt there was a need for them personally to, to visit a site in order to help them make a decision, then I think it's important that they would have that site visit. You're quite right, um, because if they didn't, I don't think it would be um i don't think it would be right then that they would proceed to vote on a on a on a matter if they felt previously that they hadn't enough information to make that decision I suppose that so that's where we're coming from and you know in terms of um advising members um but it really is a matter um for members uh, to decide for themselves whether they feel it's still necessary. And I think that's the question that the chair has been asking, which is why when we provide the information to us, depending on each of the, the, the two cases that you refer to, um, we can then re reconsider all the, if you remember members, we had a detailed discussion about this in terms of the options and how we go about it. There was just no consensus. But we can revisit that, of course, and look at all the potential options. And it will depend on the number of people as well. And um, and we went through all those uh, options. So uh, the chair is trying to explore the opportunity. If we had a site visit here that only required three members of the committee to visit, then it's going to be much easier for officers and less challenging for us to try and facilitate that. So I think that's really where we are. And we'll take on board what what the feedback will be. Hopefully that helps, Chair. Thank you. Just uh, hopefully that covers in terms of the logic, um, because what what's been explained to me is that if we were to can, if it, if it's a decision of this committee was to proceed with the application and hear an application without a site visit, which is obviously an option. Um, the 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 decision of the committee could be called on the question. If that individual application or um, member voted on it, despite requesting that they would benefit from a site visit, and I understand that um, with people are saying that they make requests because um, they feel that it would benefit others, um, I, I, I think that we're all big enough um, to speak for ourselves, and no, I certainly don't need um, an, another member to speak for me to tell me that I would benefit from a site visit, and. It's up to each of us individually. Um, if we require, if we, if we, um, if we require a site visit on an application, that option is available to us. But it's only those. If those people wish to have a site visit, then they need to let us know um, that they that they wish to attend a site visit, and a site visit can be arranged as soon as possible. Um, just in relation to um, the, and, and to be honest, see anybody that's spoken. Um, everybody's spoken. Um, from what I'm getting gathering the steer is that we continue those site visit requests are going to remain requests and we're going to explore having a site visit. But I just want um, Maura or Eamon to come on and touch on the, the use of technology 
um, because that was some um, that was one topic that hasn't been touched on. Um, so, is there is there any possibility of the use of technology? Yeah, I think definitely, Chair. Um, that is definitely something we can explore. And if members felt content that if there was a, an extensive enough video supplied of the site and we passed it all members um, and that they felt then that was sufficient, um, then I don't see any reason why um, that couldn't help to ease the situation in terms of the current circumstances. So it's definitely something we would explore and, and talk to Philip about. Um, but I would I would be fairly positive that we could do that and prepare that for members in a safe so, manner. So I'm going chair. to sorry, I'm going to sorry, me. Chair, if I can come in there. Um, yeah, we can also, as as Maura said, we look at technology. We can also look at um, perhaps using drone footage, which would perhaps give members the the, the views and and the sites uh, that they know. So we we will explore, as Maura has said. All the technological options, in addition to the the possibility of a physical site visit, um, if members if members are content to do that and it can be safely arranged, so we will look at all the options um to to be able to progress this so that members can take decisions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Eamon. Thanks, Maura. And just in relation to moving on, um, I'm going to suggest we we put a time bound on this. Um, so say if we close the play next Monday, can I ask members to um, contact um, our admin team and they express your direction. Um, if you wish to attend a site visit, if you would be content with um, a, a video or a drone footage of a particular application site, and we, we can work forward on that basis. So by the close of play, on Monday, um, if members can have their thoughts relayed to um, our admin team. I'm going to move on now, members and chairpersons business. I'm going to hand over to Maura just to talk us through the late items that have been circulated. Thank you, Chair. Um, members, you will have been circulated a number of items um, in the last 24 hours. Um, we've got two items in terms of the first uh, item on the agenda. There is a speaking statement um, from the, the agent, Matt Kennedy. There's also a, an, e an email from Matt Kennedy um, just from today, 12 o'clock, which you'll have only recently found in your inbox. For item three on the agenda, we also have a speaking statement by the agent, Joe McCormick. And for item four, we have two um, late items. One is the speaking statement again from Joe McCormick. And secondly, we have an email, um, which is uh, an email of support from Councillor Derek Hosse, which is dated the 2nd of December as well. So I'll leave it to the chair for you to consider what time you may need to take to, cons to consider these items. Thank you. Okay. Uh Mara, um, thank you for that. Just in, in relation to what we, what has um, become normal practice, we are we usually take um, the time, the relevant time at the beginning of each of those applications, so we can familiarise ourselves with the the late information that's been submitted. Given that the late information um, and some of those items relate to speaking notes, which will um, which members are going to have the benefit of hearing. Um, those speaking notes have been provided in the event as a backup in the event that we have a technology a technological failure. So um, I'm, I don't plan to leave too much time for members um, to familiarise yourselves with that. Um, members, in terms of the running order, um, we have only five applications in front of us today. All five applications um, have speakers um, uh, in relation to them so um, but one of those speakers or one of those applications um, there has been lead information supplied um, which relates to personal information so what I'm going to suggest is we amend the running order um, and we have one application one two three and then five 
and then item four, which has um, which, which is subject to personal information, I'm going to suggest that we go on the confidential to discuss that. Um, so, um, the first application that will be, uh, or we'll, we'll go through it in, the, in order um, as they're presented, apart from number four. Um, we'll take number four last. Um, finally, members, um, I have been advised um, by the head of planning that there is the potential for additional planning committee meetings in the new year. Um, so I just want to draw members' attention to that, making sure you are aware of them, but um, there's, there's a potential of us having additional meetings in the new year, so you've been forewarned. Um, and thankfully, that's, the, that, that's me in terms of chairperson's business. I'm going to move on now to the matters arising from the, the meeting held on Wednesday the 4th of November. Um, any matters arising, members? No. Nope. I'm going to move straight on the item, the item seven, the planning application list with recommendations. And our first applicant, our first item is LA 11 2020 It's an outline application for a site. Um, at um, it's a site in the countryside. Um, at lands adjacent to it's number seventeen Temple Road. Um, members, there's little information attached to that, and I'm going to I'm going to ask members to take a minute or two to familiarise yourself with the little information, and then we'll proceed. Thank you. Members, are you content to move on, or does anybody wish to have more time? I, I appreciate that um, some of these information has been sort of been drop fed, and some of it has landed pretty late in the day. But um, I understand that Suzanne is going to um, try and incorporate um, some of that information um, during her presentation. But as as we see that the agent. Um, is here, um, and we will have an opportunity to ask your agent any questions in relation to the information that's been submitted. So I'm going to pass over to Mar or, um, Suzanne. Okay, thanks, Chair. Can you see see the presentation okay? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, members, this is item one. It's a site for proposed unfilled dwelling in line with policy CTY8, ribbon development of PPS 21, and the site is on lands adjacent to number 17 Temple Road. Strathfoyle Maydown. The recommendation is to refuse. Members, the first slide uh, shows you the location map with the site outlined in red here. And we have the existing dwelling number 17 here. And then we have three electricity pylons here. And that red line there relates to the visibility displays. Uh, this is just a satellite image of the overhead of the site for you. This here shows the site when viewed from the main road adjacent to the site. So this is the area of the site here. This is the hedge boundary number 17. And we start to see in this picture the pylons. And then the second picture here is a wider view of the pylons with the overhead lines. 
This is looking at the site from the south back up Temple Road, uh, where you can see the pylons and the overhead lines and the dwelling over here uh, in the corner. So really, when it's assessing this application, the policy frameworks listed in your reports, uh, the consultation responses, uh, DFI roads, uh, the agent did submit revised plans, DFI ro roads revised their response on the 12th of November. So the sixth reason for refusal members has now been addressed uh, and we will not be proposing to refuse it on the roads grounds today. Environmental health did raise concerns uh, in terms of the noise impact specifically in relation to the overhead lines, given they're 110 kilovolt and the noise being emitted um, at various times, at various stages of, of the, the lines in operation. NIE, from our consultation, have objected to the application, but clearly the late information that we've received just at midday today from the agent, uh, whereby they have been um, contacting NIE uh, themselves um, would show that NIE are, are, are reconsidering their issue, uh, but we have received no formal consultation on that. Um, their initial response was that there, there may be some infringement on safety clearances due to the close proximity of the pylons. And our DFI rivers and SES have no objection. So in terms of the policy assessment, um, clearly it's under PPS, Dairy Area Plan and PPS 21, uh, and the applicant has, and the agent has built a case around uh, CTY 8, um, and they feel that um, the pylons qualify as buildings, and combined with number 17 Temple Road, constitute a continuous and built up frontage along the stretch of Temple Road, resulting in the, in the criteria CTY 8. And they have considered that the definition of a building and what constitutes a building, um, they have provided definition set out in the planning order in 1991, but clearly that has been superseded by the Planning Act. However, the definition remains the same. A building includes any structure or erection in any part of a building as defined, but does not include plant or machinery comprising a building. So effectively here, the, the case has been made that the pylon is a structure and therefore, because of the wide definition in the Planning Act that brings a range of structures and buildings under the meaning of development, that there is a, a default position here that this structure is a building and therefore can be um, considered to meet the infill policy. Um, in terms of background here, uh, yes, that is a point in, in planning law and consideration. However, the legislation and policies refer to buildings differently and we have just given you an example in the general in your report uh, in terms of the PD regulations that actually defines a building further you know and, and takes out other structures out of the definition of a building um, we also know in, in PPS 21 that there are various policies on different buildings um, uh, we have CTY4 the conversion reuse of buildings CTY9 caravan Files, CTY 12, agricultural buildings. So I think the background here is that there is a there's a wider um, understanding of the use of the, the word building. But getting back to CTY 8, and the essential test here is um, we know that it you know CTY 8 permits an exception for a maximum of two houses within an otherwise and substantial and continuously built up frontage provided this respects the scale, siting and plot size for other environmental requirements. So the essential consideration here is the consideration of the built up frontage. And CTY8 considered a built up frontage to include a line of three or more buildings along a road frontage without accompanying development to the rear. So in assessing that, it's the officer's view that the pylons, uh, contrary to the view of the agent, that they don't form a built up frontage by, very, by their very nature, they're open in appearance. They're open structures that support high voltage electricity lines. Um, I mean, if we were to take the blanket view that, that any structure is a building um, and that that would, you know, in the context of CTY8, you know, we also must be mindful that it also asks uh, a consideration of the respect and of the size, scale and siting and plot size. You know, we, we couldn't be looking at a new building to respect the scale and size of a pylon. It's just inconsistent um, and it would result in inappropriate 
development and it's not within the aims of PPS 21. PPS 21 has two aims at the start of the document and set development. Therefore, we feel that those three pylons cannot be considered as part of the built-up frontage. There's one existing dwelling there, but that's only one, and we know that we need um, a, a gap within a, a, a built-up frontage of three. Um, and therefore, we feel it's not a doesn't it's not an appropriate gap site, and in actual fact, would create ribbon development. The other policy considerations in PPS 21 are integration, CTY 13, and rural character. You can see from the photos previously that the site is quite open. I can put those up at the end for you. Um, and we feel that it wouldn't satisfactory integrated dwelling. And the creation of ribbon development will um, therefore alter rural character as per CTY 14. The other policy consideration which we have to take into consideration is, is policy ENV4 in the dairy area plan, which actually defines a number of areas of local nature conservation amenity and amenity importance. This site actually falls within LCA3, Strathfoyle, uh, and we know that ENV4 only permits development in exceptional circumstances. Um, therefore, as the proposal is not considered an exception, CTY, yet it follows it could not be considered to meet ENV4. Uh, only exceptions are permitted. Um, I am aware that the agent has submitted a, a, a biodiversity information last week, um, but I mean, that was not a reason for refusal uh, as such, but um, the logic would follow that if it, if it doesn't meet CTY8, that it, it wouldn't um, meet ENV4. So having considered all the material considerations, we know the roads issue has been resolved. Uh, in terms of the NIE position, you know, we have, we, as, as an officer team, we haven't had that confirmation from NIE, but I, I note their, their email to the agent on that. Um, but in, in the round, we have the, the recommend for a few remains in terms of CTY 1, 8, 13 and 14, PPS 21 and ENV4 of the area plan. Therefore, refusal is recommended. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, going to invite the agent, um, Matt Kennedy, to address the committee. You're very welcome, Matt. Um, you have five minutes. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, councillors, for the opportunity to address the planning committee on behalf of my client. Um, you've already seen my letter. We've got a background on the letter, the site for the daughter. The daughter's a hospital worker. She works in, she's a doctor working in a hospital in the UK. She qualifies as an essential worker. Um, she wants to return to Northern Ireland. She's applied for jobs not in the Galvin and Causeway Hospital. So that's a wee bit of the background. Key planning issue, I agree with Suzanne, is whether this proposal qualifies as a site for an unfall dwelling. Policy CTY8 of PPS 21 defines a ribbon as a substantial and built up frontage of development comprising a line of three or more buildings along a lower frontage without accompanying development to the rear. Now, the difference between us is that the planners are saying that they don't consider the electric pylons qualify as buildings. I'm saying that they did. To support my argument, I would say five things. One, Section 250 of the Planning Act Northern Ireland, the definition of a building, clearly includes any structure or erection, whether it's open or not. Therefore, I believe that definition is very clear. An electric pylon qualifies as a building under the definition. Two, policy CTY8 doesn't actually define any buildings, gives no definition of building within the policy. So there's ambiguity already built within the policy. William Morrison QC in his book Planning Appeals Principles has pointed out, has pointed out that the PAC has determined as a principle of decision making that where there's ambiguity in policy or any other document, an appellant is entitled to have his proposal assessed on the basis of the interpretation most favourable to the appellant. There's clear ambiguity within this policy. There's clear ambiguity 
within the definition of building, and therefore I believe that ambiguity has to be applied in favour of the appellant. Fourth point, our councils have applied this approach as set out by Orbison, and engineered structures such as bridges, reservoirs and electric pylons all qualify as buildings elsewhere. 2015, in Causeway Council, I got planning permission for two unfill dwellings at Dunhamallet Road in Ballycastle, where we used the Northern Ireland Water Reservoir because it qualified as a building to demonstrate the built up frontage along the road. I've put photographs and the planning permission on that at the back of my pack, which you can have a look at. Uh, in terms of the, in relation to the definition, what I would say, these existing pylons are not and could never have been permitted development. They're 120, 120 feet in height and they were erected many years ago. So the 2015 General Development Order doesn't, has never and could never apply to them. The General Development Order applies to small electric boxes which you find in housing estates which are considered to be permitted development and are permitted as part and parcel of a housing development application. A uh, 120 foot electric pilot is not PD, it's not an apparatus, it's clearly a building. So if we accept that they're buildings, there's four buildings along this section of Temple Road and the proposal clearly meets the definition of a continuously closely built up frontage, which respects the existing development pattern in terms of scale, siting, and plot size, we would propose to do something similar to number 17 next door uh, in terms of scale, so it will match what's already there. In terms of the, the issue, in terms of the amenity area, you'll note that the entrance to this application is directly opposite the entrance to Westlake. I was around when the PAC in 2000 approved that road as an access and dezoned land in Strathfoil. That access road is 1.5 kilometres long and it has been driven through the middle of this amenity and conservation area. And the reason why the PAC approved it was that they said it wouldn't harm the visual amenity or character of the area. In this case, what we have here is we have a natural cluster of development. I've got the dwelling at number 17, I've got the three electric pylons, and directly opposite I have the old primary school at number 18. And I believe that this proposal is a natural rounding off of that existing flow. The biodiversity checklist that we submitted shows that there's nothing of visual amenity importance or conservation value on the application site that would detract from the amenity area. And therefore, we, would, we believe that this proposal will enhance rather than detract from the amenity area. And if I, in terms, sorry. Sorry, Matt. Your five, your five minutes are up. Okay, thank you. I would just ask uh, the planning committee: Would they consider now approving this application? Thank you, Matt. Um, members, is there any questions for Mr. Kennedy? No. There's no indicated speakers for Matt or questions for Matt. I'm going to move on to questions to the officer. No, there's no questions. Thank you, Matt. Okay, thank you. Um, any questions or comments for Suzanne? Nothing, members? Um, here. So, Councillor Kelly, going ahead. Would it be possible to get a, a map on the screen of the uh, area of conservation? Um, I don't have that map. Uh, sorry, no. um, apologies. Um, Okay. That's okay, Chair. It's not available. Okay. Okay. Um, is there uh, any Chair? I have that map. Um, I have that map. I could put it up to the screen if you if you want to put up the screen. 
Okay. Um, and I don't know how it'll appear, whether you can see it or not. Um, I don't know how that, whether you can read that or not. We can't. Matt, your camera's off. Ah, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, no, but, okay. No, I, I don't think that's an option. Um, we can. Is there any other questions for Suzanne? Any comments, members? There's there's a recommendation, a recommendation to refuse with a number of refusal reasons. Are your members content with the refusal? Chair, I wonder, could I just come on a moment? Yep, go on ahead, Mark. Just, just to reiterate, members, um, what in regard to the late items, um, just that you know, the only reason for refusal that has been withdrawn from that list at the moment was the sixth reason for refusal in terms of the officer recommendation and that related to DFA. I just wanted to point that out, um, just before members. Um, proceeded. Thank you. So, members, um, I've no indicated speakers. Uh, Chair, uh, sorry, I, I was too slow typing in. Go on uh, ahead. Can I come on? Chair, I, uh, I've, I've had so, all right, Chair, I would be content to propose that we accept the officer's recommendation. Um, Thank you, Alderman Kerrigan. Um, have we a seconder for that, that proposal? Thank you. Seconder with Councillor Gallagher? Yes. Thank you. Um, is there any other comments? No. So we have a proposal um, from Alderman Kerrigan. They, ref they accept the recommendation, they refuse. Seconder with Councillor Gallagher. Um, members, if there's no um, dissent of voices, I'm going to take that as unanimous. No. Members, that's unanimous. Um, so that application has been refused. I'm going to move on now to the second application. Um, it's LA 11 2020 0623. Um, it's a proposed two story dwelling and attached domestic yards um, at northeast of 33 Eden Ray Road. Dylan, I'm Derek, and it's John that's going to take us through that. John, are you ready? John? Yeah, okay, I can, I can, yeah, I can hear you, I can see you now. Are you good to go? I'm sorry, I'm... Members, I'm not getting John at all. Is there anybody else? Um, Say not, not here. Not, not getting them chair at all. Not getting them. John, your connection is a really bad connection. Um, so I'm going to going to move on to item three, and we're going to um, and see if we can. We'll come back to you. See if we've got a better connect connection. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on to item three, John. We might need you to phone in. Um, but item three is LA eleven twenty twenty zero two seven seven. It's an outline application for a dwelling and garage immediately northeast of eighty one Strabane Road, Castle Derg, and it's Malgi that's going to take us through this. Members, there's 
there's um, a lid information that's attached to this, um, but it relates me maybe um, the, the speaking notes and from the agent. So I'm going to assume that um, that we're going to have the opportunity to hear from Mr. McCormick. So I'm going to take that as read, um, and we don't need to take the time at this minute in time to to consider it, um, unless members feel that they they need the time. No. Um, no, I'm going to hand over to Malachi and Malachi will take us through the application. Malachi, you are, are you ready to go? Uh, yes, Chair. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can see the screen. There's not... Can you see the, the share the screen? Yes. No, it's a blank screen. There we go. Okay, thank you. Um, item number three is uh, LA 11 2020 It's an outline application for a proposed dwelling that lands immediately northeast of 81 Strabane Road, Castle Derg. And the recommendation is to refuse. The location on the left hand side here, the site is outlined in red. Um, it's a uh, and the, 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 the the image on the right hand side is a overhead view of it, um, a photograph of the site. Um, the attached image here is uh, an extract from the Stravan area plan showing the site uh, as outlined in red. As you'll see, that the site is just at the very edge of the development limits of Castle Derg. Um, the next image shows uh, the site itself. Um, you can see behind that tree is number 81 um, Castle Derg Road, which is adjacent to the site. The site is here where cursor is showing. The roadside views of the site on the left hand side as you're um, leaving Castle Derg, we have 81 Castle Derg Road, the uh, development limits, uh, and here. It is just before those trees. Um, so if you can see where my cursor is, that's over the end of the development limit. And again, looking as you travel in towards Castle Derg development limit, you can see 81 here, which is the age of the development limits, uh, and the site is uh, outlined in red there. Um, as contained in the, my case office report, the, the policy assessment is outlined here. Uh, the main policy considerations will be the Stravan area plan and PPS 21 and SPPS, um, given the, the nature of the proposal and its location outside of the development limits in the countryside. Um, there was a number of consultees, uh, as you'll see from the report, and there was no objections. Um, firstly, as the under section six of the Planning Act uh, requires us to make plan decisions in accordance with the, the LDP. Um, the Straban area plan is the, the current rail of the LPT uh, uh, in relation to this application. Um, the Straban area plan contains a number of policy areas. Um, the, the relation to rural policy in particular, the second of these is a, a roads based policy, um, which the purpose of this policy is to avoid development pressure um, outside the development limits of uh, a number of identified settlements um, and, and, and in a sense, uh, try to avoid urban sprawl and urban development, coalescence of settlement and loss of visual amenity. Um, the main road from Castle Dare to Ergana um, is identified as one of the, within these policy areas, as you'll see in the, the attached image, the slight lies in the attached area in red of the Straban Road. So, um, this policy within Straban Area Plan is applicable, uh, and we believe that the, the site would, um, if approved, lead to urban development, urban sprawl, coalescence of uh, the settlement, uh, and not satisfy this particular requirement of the Straban Area Plan. Um, of also relevance is PPS 21. Um, the agent has, under CTA 1, the number of policy. Um, policy areas which allow for development in the countryside for uh, one-off single dwellings. And the agent has put forward um, a case um, attached to a number of the, the, the areas set out in CTY1. 
Um, we've been asked to consider policy 2A. However, we believe that PPS 21 uh, uh, sets out that policy 2A um, applies to clusters of development on the countryside. Um, the proposed development relies on um, a clustering with development fund the settlement. Therefore, we do not believe that policy CTY2A applies in this particular case. Uh, in addition to that, we've considered the policy under urban development. Um, that just don't believe this is an unfull site. There is no uh, dwellings beyond the site. Um, and we'll create a urban development uh, adding on to the existing development 81, Stradan Road, Castle Eric. Uh, in terms of rural court character, um, it's under CTY 14. Again, we think that this will create a urban de de development, lead to build up with a in view of existing development um, at 81, Castle Derrick Road. Um, particular relevance to this application also uh, and a policy that's um, within CTY 15 um, and suppose supported by the Strabane Area Plan in terms of the, the reasoning for the development limits for Castle Derg. It's also supported by SPPS is that some of the trying to application is on the southwest boundary. Um, it's therefore visually linked with uh, with development within Castle Derg. The, the development elements is visually apparent in the form of the North East and Boundary of the residential property. Um, the application site will be visually distinct from this development. Um, the Strabat Air Plans uh, from its development strategy provides for co consolidation of most future developments within a range of designated settlements. At paragraph 54 free in Racing Castle Derg, uh, in terms of defining a, a, a settlement, development, development limit for Castle Derg. The mix and important aim has been has been to resist future further urban development. So you added additional dwelling along this boundary with the settlement developments will create urban sprawl uh, and, uh, and the opinion of the officers uh, mark a distinction between the settlement of Castle Derrick and the countryside and, and therefore be contrary to the SPPS and CTY 15. Um, the next slide um, shows a number of planning histories that were referred to in the speaking notes um, some of it um, recently. Um, the application here, J2010-0359, um, was approved uh, by the department previously. Um, as I say, the, the, the application does fall outside the settlement development limits of um, Castle Derg. Um, however, the, the the policy in terms of the Strabane Area Plan wouldn't apply because it's backland development as in roadside. It doesn't create a, a ribbon along the road. So we can see it's distinct uh, in terms of different from our proposal before us. Um, and a more recent approval is LA 11 2019 um, this was a judge to be an unfull development, um, given its uh, relationship with the, the, the four dwellings. Um, that's, uh, four dwellings and the dwelling to the north of the site. So, in summary, um, we concluded that this the application is contrary to the Stravada Area Plan, um, PPS 21. And SPPS, um, it will create urban sprawl, disrupt development, uh, and it will be detrimental on the, the character of, of this location. Uh, and I just put up the refusal reasons, which are also contained within uh, the case officer report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Maggie. Um, members, I'm going to invite um, Alderman Hussey. To address the committee. Alderman Hussey, you on the line? Let me now, Chair. Yeah, go on ahead. Uh, there appreciate you. the opportunity, Chair. I know it was a, a late uh, call to yourself. I want to address uh, if members could at the beginning. Uh, go to page 50 in the presentation that they have themselves. 
and look at figure three, which is the map with regard to the Stuban area plan uh, specific to Basildur. And it shows that stretch of the road and the actual site is marked on it. I would ask members if they have that map in front of them to look carefully at the northern side of the road. On the northern side of the road, you will see there, but you will also see that the dotted line representing the settlement limitation is taking in the entirety of the fields on which the particular houses are built on the northern side of the road. Now, there's an inconsistency when you look at the side of the road, and in particular, if you look at the site itself to the right-hand side of that map, you will note that there is a house has been built in a field. But the entire field, unlike the northern side and the southern side, that entire field has not been brought in to the settlement limitation. And in fact, there's a line has been drawn around the development that actually is there. With regard to uh, uh, ribbon development, yes, there is no, no development on the uh, ergonomic side of that particular application. But we've already seen, uh, as has been outlined by the planner himself, uh, on the northern side of the road, an application has been granted, where on the town side of the application, there is no development. So, you know, but where's the consistency within the planning presentation? Uh, moving on now. Um, I'm moving and looking at the picture which shows, it's the one with the car on it, and it shows the site looking out from the Castle Derg side. On the left-hand side, you can clearly see the development that does exist. You can clearly see the, the actual boundary that is created. And, you know, it's not a Johnny Come Lately boundary. That is an established tree line that uh, prevents the erosion of the... Uh, or, or sorry, the, the eroding of the rural character and then feed and the, the, the extension of the rural character of the application. Um, finally, to if I move to the nine, which is an aerial picture of the site. Again, that very clearly illustrates the site is shown from that aerial picture on page 19. The existing house in that field is clearly shown. I mean, I do have to ask the question, why was the field not included within the settlement limitation? It clearly shows there, yes, it's the same field. Yes, there is a clear boundary so that when you're coming out of town towards Arkana, the dwelling will integrate fully within the site. When you're coming into town, the site is shielded by a very strong tree line on that site. And finally, and members have heard me on about this before, can the officer tell us how long has the Straban area plan been passed its sell-by date? We've been waiting for ages for a new plan, but you know, to continually use a, an ancient Straban area plan is totally wrong in this particular circumstance. I thank you for the opportunity, Chair, and thank the members for taking the time to listen. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, Alderman Jose. Um, I'm going to invite um, Joe McCormick to address the committee, the agent. You're very welcome, Mr. McCormick. Um, you have five minutes. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Councillors. Um, CTY 2A of PPS 21, it is quite clearly stated that permission will be granted for a dwelling at an existing cluster of development, provided it meets the following criteria. The cluster of development lies outside a farm and consists of four more buildings. This site is in a cluster of development that is outside of the Castleberg 30 mile speed limit, which defines the town of Castleberg. The buildings on the opposite side of the road, of course, do bound the site, separated only by a public road. Of course, uh, when applying for permission, neighbours have to be notified as do neighbours on the opposite side of the road. 
Therefore, can their dwellings not be used in a cluster as well? The cluster appears as a visual entity in the local landscape. The site is without doubt a visual entity in the local landscape. The cluster is associated with the focal point. The cluster is associated with the uh, local M church and Str on Straban Road, Castle Derg. The site provides a suitable degree of enclosure and is bounded on at least two sides by our development. This site has dwellings at 81, 79, 77, etc. on the other side of the road and 84, 86 and 88 on the other side of the road as well. Dwellings in spring. Sorry, my granddaughter has just entered the room. Uh, development of the site can be absorbed into the existing cluster through rounding off and consolidation and will significantly alter, alter its existing character or intrude into the open countryside. A dwelling on this site will definitely be a rounding off of development and could not possibly alter or visually intrude into the open landscape as we are still within the 40 mile an hour speed limit. The development would not adversely impact residential amenity. This proposal definitely will not be hostile to the surroundings, as it is a single, small story dwelling which will blend with the mature trees and dwellings around it. The planners themselves have said that they believe that this would not be part of a cluster. But the fact that they say believe uh, makes me think that they are not sure. The site is well defined with a line of trees on the eastern boundary, northeastern boundary. These create a natural break with the farmland to the east of the site, which will form an end to development on this side of the Strand Road Castle there. A precedent has already been set with the development outside the development limits of Castle Derg at the rear of number 88 Straban Road. There was planning permission granted for dwelling to the rear of 88 Straban Road a few years ago under planning application reference number G2010 0359 bar F and again under G2011 0137 bar F for a change of house type. The case officer, Mr. Philip Peoples, originally recommended refusal, but the planning manager, Jerry Hogg, decided that the site met with the requirements of PPS 21. There is no difference in this application or the application I applied for. And that's the fairness factor. Using the fairness factor, I would like the same consideration to be given to this application with an approval issue. When traveling towards Castle Derg, this site at the rear of 88 Straban Road is much more prominent than the application site, which is well screened by mature trees and hedging on its boundaries. The applicant here wishes to retire to this site in a single-story dwelling, which again will not be as prominent as the large two-story dwelling to the rear of 88 Straban Road. I would also point out that this site is not part of a large field, as suggested by the planning department, but is a similar size to the site uh, at the adjacent house at number 81 and has been fenced off like this for at least 15 years. In conclusion, I say that an approval on this site will not erode rural character, will not be detrimental to change to rural character, will not be urban sprawl. There is no reason why this site cannot be approved based upon the number of existing dwellings surrounding it and the approval at the rear of 88 Strabane Road Castle Derg. I therefore ask that the Planning Committee reject the planner's recommendation to refuse. Thank you. Mr. McCormick, um, members, any questions for Mr. McCormick? No? Councillor uh, Boyle, go ahead. I can show you hear me okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Joe, uh, you outlined um, a previous um, precedent type situation that, that I've been passed, I think you said 2011. Could you give us a bit more detail into the background of that? I'm not familiar with that particular uh, area. Yeah, that particular site is outside the uh, the planning zone for Castle Air. Um, the black dotted line referred to by Councillor Hussey um, and 
that is on the on the out, outskirts of Castle Derg, approximately a hundred meters uh, to one hundred and fifty meters further towards Strabane than the site applied for. Uh, it's a large two-story house, and um, there's uh, it's a sort of a builder's yard around it as well. So there's a lot of big equipment, and as I say, it's a two-story house, not at all like what we have applied for here. And there is absolutely no vegetation or anything around that site. And supplementary to that, uh, was it outside the local development plan area, Lamarck? Yeah. It definitely is outside. As the planning officer said, it is just outside, but it is still outside the planning area. But was that particular one outside? Yes, it, it was. Right, okay. And that was 2011, did you say, yeah? 2011 and ended in 2013. Right, okay, that's grand. All right, now that's all I need to know, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. McCormick, members? No. Okay. Thank you, Mr. McCormick. Thank you. Um, and thanks to Alderman Hussey. Before I invite um, questions to the officer, I know that Alderman Hussey um, made, uh, in, in his um, presentation, he made a few questions or comments, and I'm going to um, give the officers um, an opportunity to respond either through Mara or Malgi. Mara, do you want to come on in any of the remarks that Alderman Hussey had um, mentioned specifically in relation to the Stroban area plan? Um, Chair, I have nothing specific to say other than, you know, this is the current plan that we're working from and um, that, you know, we have to obviously consider this alongside other um, current policy in terms of the rural plan policy, but I'll pass you on to um, Maliki. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, just to um, follow up with what Morrow was saying, like, as I alluded to in the presentation, we have a statutory obligation under the, the Planning Act to the, the take account of the, the current plan making plan decisions unless material considerations to dictate um this is the the current um local development plan for this particular location so uh, it is a material consideration and the policies uh, contain fun or material consideration in this application thank you thank you malagi members um any other questions to malagi any comments Councillor Boyd. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Maliki, the, the previous question that I referenced uh, to Mr. McCormick there, where um, is that particular site that, that he's talking about? Is that, can that be seen in, in the documentation that we have in front of us? Yes, um, I'd like to give you two maps here, uh, Councillor Boyd. Um, firstly, um, Seeing the presentation, the the, the site settlement, settlement development limits of Castle Derg and the site in question would be approximately where my cursor is at now. Here, let me know. Hang on, um, hang on, hang on. I'm looking at a different document. Hang on, hang on. Right, okay, so go yep. ahead. And then there's an R image further on in the presentation where you will actually see the the site itself, it's just this kind of this driveway here, uh, and this is the two story dwelling that was approved. Uh, and the, the development limits, the dotted line, I suppose, that, that that's referred to in the, the, the survey area plan would have went along the edge of this property here. So, yes, it's to confirm it, it is outside the settlement development limits of Castle Derg. Um, yeah, and as I say, alluded to in my presentation, we would make a distinction on the basis that the proposal before us is uh, roadside in nature. Um, 
the policy requirements of the Sri Lanka Iron Plan, and particularly the the rural policy about roadside pressure development, which is a distinct policy on the Sri Lanka Iron Plan. Um, we believe that that should be given greater weight uh, and is more relevant to the sites that we're considering than would have been at the time. And of course, um, this application was decided before by a, a, a different planning authority, the Department of Environment. And you know, it's we may not necessarily, as officers, um, arrive at the same conclusion um, as they would have uh, for that particular proposal. No. Thank you. Um, Alderman Kerrigan. For allowing me in. Uh, Chair, I, I would be minded here that uh, I would be disagreeing here, Chair, to be fair, with the officers here on this one here. I've looked at their points there, and you kind of have two aspects of it here, Chair, to be fair. Um, we do have it classified here as outside the development limits of Castle Derg, and therefore it's classified as a house in the countryside. And therefore, Chair, we will refer back to the Stavan area plan and referring back to uh, Stavan area plan 123.2.1, the rural remainder, Chair. And I can read it out here. I do have it if I turn it up here. A less restrictive planning policy will be applied throughout this area. And applicants seeking plan permission for single dwellings will not have to demonstrate a need to live in the countryside. So therefore, Chair, I would be minded that that is one aspect of it. But it has reasons here for refusal. Uh, CTY1, uh, Sustainable Development Countryside. Again, I would be minded it's the Ban Area Plan has the rural remainder will counter that. CTY8, uh, the erode the rural character of the area. And CTY14, a suburban style build up. And uh, CTY 15, it will mar the distinction between Castle Derg and surrounding countryside. It has been raised here, Chair. I would be minded, if we're looking here, that that site here would be a round and off, Chair. Uh, and ultimately, there, anybody in the area there would designate that as part of Castle Derg within the town. Uh, I mean, the speed limit signs, I know you can't base it on that, but the speed limit signs are beyond that. And has has been raised already by previous speakers, Chair, that the uh, the previous site that had been allowed on the opposite side was without uh, outside the town limits, and as up and there as I say, it's on it's on the screen now at the minute, Chair. So that had been allowed in the past, and that was without the limits, and that is a far more prominent site and can be very easily seen, and it's a large two-storey dwelling house. And it's up above the road as you're coming and entering into the town from the Stavan Road, whereby the site that's in question here is down off the road. It's a lower level than road level. And there is that very uh, mature hedge and, and trees down that line of that field. And uh, therefore, Chair, I would be minded that that would very much be a distinct boundary between the town and uh, the, the, the countryside. And as well as that, Chair, I suppose that application that previous application was also referred to chair l11 2019 it's on the screen 0278 um uh, that outline plan that i'm assuming that chair that was an officers um uh, that wasn't that was delegated to officers that didn't come before the plan committee sure chair as far as i recall that's just a wee question as well and that because that and theory if you're if you're querying cty 15 mar and the distinction between the town and the countryside granting that there wouldn't have helped it so but chair i would be minded this application here i i would disagree with officers and again i would classify that it's rounding off of the site and the mature hedge in there will be acceptable this would be allowable chair and again the stavan area plan the 123.2.1 so chair i would be more minded to disagree with the officers and i would be more minded that we would um grant the out uh, the permission here as has been requested but chair i will i can leave it for other speakers if anyone else wishes to come in before i actually make that as a proposal chair thank you very much for allowing me in thanks alderman kegan and, and i know a lot of that was commentary and it was in in, in the lead up to a proposal um but we haven't got a proposal yet but um i'm going to ask well, you 
there was one question on there in relation to the, the previous or the planning history in LA 11 2019 and 0278. And Maggie, can you provide yeah. some on that? Yeah, yeah, I believe it was a delegated application, but uh, it was assessed under policy CQA 8, you know, in terms of being an unfold development. Um, it was considered this was an unfold between the, the, the dwellings on the air can I say, the figures four or five buildings uh, and this property here uh, on the, the castle air side. So it was uh, seen as a, as a unfold site sufficient to, to accommodate uh, one dwelling. Uh, and I suppose the, the only other point that I'm making um, relation to the, the previous comments was that in terms of Stravan area plan, it, it, we believe it's, that this, as in rural remainder, we believe it lies within the highway policy area, which is a distinct policy area that um, asks us to, to, to take a, a different consideration in terms of single houses in the countryside. Uh, and to assess whether it's contributing to urban development along particular roads in the Strabane, uh, as, as identified as Strabane Area Plan under paragraph uh, 19.4 of the Strabane Area Plan. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Maggie. Um, there's a few more indicated speakers. Councillor McGuire. Here, you there? Just to support what uh, Councillor Kerrigan has said, um, unlike Councillor Hussey, I'm glad the Strabane area plan is still in place, to be fair. Uh, developments like this or others may, may not get over the line. That's indeed if this does get over the line. But again, I think CTY2A is, uh, is the policy here. This, this site, uh, I would see it as a rounding off. Uh, there's a strong, mature hedge laying there. It's obviously not a fabricated one. It's been there for years and years. And a house type that's proposed will nestle in there nicely uh, without marring the distinction between uh, uh, causing urban sprawl uh, and uh, the urban sprawl which we see on the other side of the road. So just to support Councillor uh, Again, what do you have said, Chair? Thanks. Thank you, um, Councillor McGuire, Councillor Gallagher. Thank you, Chair. Just, uh, and I know this is outlined permission, but just a question from Maggie, just in the sense of if this was given and coming back in full, would there be serious sight lines coming out, coming out of the site uh, down Straban Road? You know, there would be. Uh, if, if it was to be proceeded away. You know, like a, a number of councillors and a number of the presentation has used the, those trees, you know, as a uh, protecting the countryside element. But would it work doorway as like being a great interference to sight lines? Um, yeah, um, on the, the right hand side, that there, there may be some clearance to accommodate um, sight lines, but you, you wouldn't lose the the whole boundary in its entirety. That like, no, so I think the the kiss officer's report alludes the in terms of integration. Um, yeah, it, I mean there's it, it, I don't think the sight line would totally clear that the boundary you refer to. Like no, um, I suppose our issue more is to do with the the form of development uh, and the the the, 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 the the state of development in terms of the adding on the the, the settlement limits. Um, we were of opinion that clustering doesn't apply because you clustering policy within um, the SPPS and EPS 21 only applies to clusters in the countryside and all the surrounding development is within the settlement limits of Calgary and we don't get that policy to misapplied in this respect. So yeah, yeah, there there possibly be some um, vegetation removed on the, the right hand side, the Argonne side, but uh, it, I mean it still would have a, a degree of uh, screening as you come on there. Thanks, Maggie. I know um, Alderman Kerrigan has indicated that he wants to come back in, but um, I know 
from previous discussions that are, are previous contributions, Alderman Kerrigan alluded to making a proposal. I'm going to ask, is there any questions? Anybody else with another question for Malagi before I bring Alderman Kerrigan back in? Chair? Yeah, Councillor Kelly. Yeah, can I just ask in terms of the, the uh, sort of the sense of getting around a proposal coming, can the, the um, trees that are there um, that are indicated in, in six and seven and eight uh, around the site be protected as part uh, or conditioned to be protected? Um, is that something we can uh, look at in terms of um, future for if it's a, a, an approval? Yeah, provided um, the, the trees aren't affected by the site line, they aren't needed to accommodate the site lines, um, the remaining trees, if they're within the red line and ownership of the applicant, um, the, a condition can be applied if that's deemed necessary to be um in the consideration of the application. Right, sir, Kelly? You can turn, Councillor Kelly? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Thanks. So, just in terms of integration, Chair, thank you. Members, are there any further questions? No. Alderman Kerrigan? Thank you, Chair, for allowing me back in. Chair, I, I would be minded of making the proposal, Chair, that we don't accept the officer's recommendation and that we do grant the uh, outline planning permission that's been requested with the, the standard conditions and with conditions even that has been mentioned there by Councillor Kelly as well, that those trees, uh, with the exception of that may well be required in relation to site lines, that those trees are protected. Chair, so I'd be minded to propose with, that we don't accept the officer's recommendation in this case. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I note that Councillor Boyle has indicated in the chat box that, or no, Councillor Maguire has indicated in the chat box that he's second in that proposal. Yeah, but um, it doesn't matter. So, members, I'm going to, if there's no further comments, I'm going to move to a vote. So, with a proposal, um, they upset or accept the officer's recommendation from or Alderman Kerrigan, second by Councillor Maguire. Um, I know that. Councillor Gallagher has indicated that he's abstaining from this vote. Um, is there, is everybody, is everybody else in agreement? If not, can you indicate no? Councillor Hargan's abstaining. Members, just to be, just to be, um, right on this one. Um, I'm going to ask Mara to take us to a vote. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Okay, members. So, a recorded vote today now on our application item three and the recommendation is to not accept the, sorry, the proposal is the, um, not to accept the officer's recommendation and um, to refuse the application, but to approve the application. Councillor Jason Barr. For. Councillor John Boyle. For. Thank okay. you. Alderman Alan Breslin. For. Thank okay. you. Councillor Angela Dobbins. For Maura. Thank you. Councillor Paul Gallagher has abstained. Councillor Sean Harkin has abstained. Councillor Christopher Jackson. Four. Sorry, I just missed that, Councillor Jackson. Apologies for. Yes, got that. Thank you. Councillor Dan Kelly. Four. Thank you, Dan. Um, Alderman Keith Kerrigan. Four. Got that. Alderman Hilary McClintock. Four. Got that. Councillor Kieran Maguire. Four more. Okay. Councillor Philip McKinney. Four. 
Councillor Philip McKinney. Councillor Aileen Mellon. Councillor Aileen Mellon. She's apologised, she's not here. Councillor Sean Mooney. Sort of miss that, Sean. Maura. I just got the very end, Maura. Sorry, I didn't get. Four. Four. Got it. Thank you. Um, okay, Chair, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, four, and two abstained. Thank you. So that vote carries. So that, that application has been approved. Um, can we check before we move on? Is John on the line? Yes. John? John? Sorry, John. It's it's a terrible connection, John. Um, Chair, yeah. Chair, we've already been preparing on the basis that um, John isn't able to be heard because of the technology that Suzanne would step in. Okay. So Suzanne has the presentation, and hopefully she'll try here now to to get on and take this this item that John was meaning yeah, to yeah. do. Can you hear me, Suzanne? And can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Thanks, Suzanne. Share it now, members. Bear with me. Here we go. Okay, so the next application is item two, um, LA 11 2020 And it's an outline application for a two story dwelling and, and detached garage at Lands Northeast of 38 Eden Lee Road, Ellen, Castle Derg. And it's Suzanne that's going to take us through it. Yep, thank you, Chair. Um, so as mentioned, this is a proposal for a two-storey dwelling. Uh, here is, so this is obviously the rural remainder here, it's the site members um, outlined in red here, uh, sited along adjacent to Eden Ray Road. This is the farm grouping uh, that has been um, proposed as part of the consideration in terms of the policy. So, um, so the site itself is a is a rectangular northern portion of a large roadside agricultural field uh, on the southern side of Eden Ray Road. Um, the landscape is very open and undulating. Um, land is gently sloping, falling away from the roadside and the southeast. Um, just go back there a wee second. Uh, so, in terms of the boundary definition, none of the boundaries have any physical definition in terms of vegetation um, and I'll move on uh, in a wee second you can see that in the photographs. In terms of the policy consideration of the site it's set out in your reports uh, it's obviously listed here as well and we're looking at the Strapan area plan and then obviously PPS 21 being a material consideration. Um, so the site uh, I'm just going to actually try and show you a picture of the site here first. Um, overhead showing you the satellite and then in terms of the actual site uh, these pictures are looking either direction along the Eden Ray Road so you can see it is quite quite open and exposed. Um, so in terms of the policy consideration um, the proposal has been assessed under CTY 10. Uh, the, the, the farming details do actually demonstrate that the, the, the farm is active and established and that there have been no development opportunities sold off in the last 10 years. Um, however, the issue here is that the site um, is detached from the existing grouping um, and coupled with the fact that it's very open and exposed, that it doesn't cluster um, and, and have that, that, that sort of grouping that we would um, need to, to be seeing that in terms of CTY 10. The farm is set well back from the road at a much lower level than the site. Um, and I'll have a wee photo of that now, hopefully coming up. Oh, apologies, we don't have a photo of that. Uh, so in terms of uh, you'll see that actually in your reports, uh, I think it's figure three, you're looking down the laneway um, of the, uh, to, to the farm. 
um, showing the entrance to number 38. So you'll see that the grouping's on down back, way set down from the road. So in terms of integration, uh, you know, those tests still have to be considered uh, in addition to CTY10. So in the fact that it must be clustered and visually linked or visually linked, it has to provide an acceptable, you know, the site must be able to provide an acceptable level of integration where a dwelling must integrate. So clearly, you know, we feel that the that's the site, I mean, the proposal is for a two-story dwelling here. Uh, and we're we're of the view that this is quite uh, a large scale proposal on a very open and exposed site. And given the distance and the sort of back from the farm that it would, would, wouldn't would integrate and would appear in Congress. Um, CTY 14 then looks at in terms of prominence. So if something is so open and exposed, it would be considered to be prominent uh, in terms of CTY 14. And again, it is a two story proposal here. I think there were no representations made on the application and the consultees were all satisfied uh, in terms of issues, in terms of roads or anything like that. Uh, standard conditions applied. So in summary, we feel that given the site is, is a much higher ground than the farm buildings, um, that it doesn't meet the criteria for seats criteria C and, and that it's it's clearly not clustered and, and the distance it's it's too 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 distant. Or too far away from the existing farm to be visually linked, um, and that therefore it also doesn't meet CTY 13 and 14, um, and refusals recommended. Thank you. Um, thank you, Suzanne, um, for that, for stepping in. Um, can I invite David McKinley um, to address the committee? Have we David online? You haven't been. Can you see me okay? Hear me okay? I can hear you okay. Um, you're very welcome, David. Um, David, you five minutes to address the committee. Lovely. I want to thank the thank the chair and thank the planning committee for allowing me to speak on behalf of my applicant. Um, I have reviewed the planning statement and will respond to each of the points as, as, as they are presented of refusal. One, uh, the proposal is not contrary to CQI 10 in that. It does visually link in some form to to the uh, to an outlying farm, and I think it's been demonstrated. And I don't think planning service have an issue that the farm at 38 Eden Ray Road is an outlying farm. Uh, when you read policy, there's no there's no definition on on, on an extent of visual linkage. It can be either 10 percent or 90 percent. We do have a visual linkage, and particularly if you go to figure figure six. Of the planning statement, uh, not shown in front of you, but the one that you would have received, that clearly shows the two-story, the two-story um, silo and the farmhouse, in a in a sort of uh, in, a, in an approach to the to the farm from from an eastern direction, uh, which is at the bottom of the hill. Look, the 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 um, the fire or the, the proposal certainly does integrate with the with with the. But the farm grouping, I have no hesitation in, in that. Um, uh, point one, point one, that's clearly clarified. Point two and three is virtually the same. Look, we're looking at uh, the site lacks long established boundaries. That, that's correct, but the, we're, we're sitting on top of uh, Strahi Mountain, more or less Strahi Mountain. And you can see from the photographs that, that, that uh, Suzanne showed you, or the overview of it, there's there's limited even the houses that are there have no degree of enclosure. The only enclosure you have up in the sky is, is stone walls. That's the definition of a boundary: stone walls and wind bushes. Uh, we do have the added advantage as, as you would travel east to west of the site or from the bottom of the site towards the farm grouping. You do have a rising road. Now the rising road uh, itself rises from from say zero to to the top of the hill would be approximately eight meters. We're, we're we're chiseling in a level platform halfway up that, so you do have a, a level of of enclosure. It's not prominent by, by by its nature. It won't be if you're if you're digging into the hill, uh, but you still got to maintain a visual linkage with the farmyard. Um, I I think to be fair, the, uh, the 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 undulating 
the undulating statement is not strictly true. It rises and it rises to the top of the hill where the entrance is into the farmyard. Uh, that's why we didn't position. That's why we didn't position the uh, the site next to the farmyard um, uh, because it's, it's it's on top of the on top of the hill. Um, two other things, and, and you talk about clustering and siting through the to to the farmyard. Um, your own environmental health department would would, would state that. Look, anybody non-farming should be 75 meters, at least 75 meters away from from uh, from a working and active farm, which this clearly is. I have I have the corner of my site is 75 or 70 meters from the corner of the of the silo, uh, part of the working farm. So, whilst Bernard himself, the applicant, is a farmer, a farmer's uh, a farmer's son and a, and a grandson. The wife isn't, or the intended wife isn't, and I think we've got to take her, we've got to take her uh, opinion in as well. So I, I'm I'm going on the back of environmental health and their statement of 75 meters clear, which we've kept, and I've kept the site located in such a position that we can integrate it with the rising ground. We've got uh, we've got rising ground which rises from the east to the west, as as you stand at the bottom of the site looking up. We've got all that, so I, I think, and I'm content that we've met condition one. Uh, and condition two, uh, in regards to citing and visually linking to a to a, a working farmyard, and we've also answered three and four, which is CTY thirteen and fourteen uh, integration and uh, integration and prominence. Uh, I, 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 I'm just to finish on it. I suppose prominence is if it's sticking out in your face. It's not. We've got a figure six shows clearly. The farmyard behind, there's an eight, ten meter high silo, uh, or two story house, be it six and a half, seven and a half, eight and a half meter ridge, will cluster nicely, will cluster nicely with that farmyard. Uh, so I suppose the finish it's a it's a it's a it's a genuine case for building on a farm that don't often come up. Uh, he's called upon from time to time to farm on the farm. Uh, so it's important that he's near handed. Uh, um, basically, basically that's me, guys. If I can help you out with any other questions, let me know. That's my my statement finished. Thank you, Mr. McKinley. Um, members, any questions? No. No. Okay. Thank you, Mr. McKinley. Um, members, moving on now to questions to the officer. Uh, any questions to Suzanne? Any comments, members? So, members, is it? Um, the councillor Boyle, did you want to come on on this? We can make a proposal, Chair, if nobody's got any questions. Okay. Um, members, is there any other questions before we bring councillor Boyle on? Okay. Councillor Boyle, go oh, ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, and sometimes I know these things can be quite balanced, uh, Chair, but the officer report's very clear for me. Uh, I feel that the the reasons for refusal are, are very well, very strong. Uh, they're very well um, laid out for us. Um, I think it's probably stretching it a bit, certainly in my view, from the evidence presented to me, Chair, to say that this is visually linked with the other buildings. Uh, it really is stretching it, um, uh, albeit that that may well be a, a subjective view, um, uh, and the agent may feel one thing, but uh, there's a significant difference there, or, uh, distance there, in my view. Um, uh, and again, suggesting that there's any degree of integration with with those other farm buildings. Again, for me, that's stretching it too. Uh, the the report um, uh, is quite damning in regard to some of that as well. Uh, and, and in my view, it is a very undesirable level of development. And and what is a very wide open uh, countryside environment, uh, a two-storey building in particular, in that nature, I don't think that could be particularly well integrated. So on, 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 the, on the back of what I just said, uh, Chair, um, uh, I'm proposing that we accept the officer recommendation. Um, thank you, Councillor Boyd. 
my apologies to Councillor McGuire. Um, you've indicated to come on. Um, Councillor McGuire, you there? Yeah, Chair. Uh, mine's would have been a counter proposal, so I don't know if you, you have to take this one first. Well, uh, there's uh, there's no proposal. That proposal has yet to be seconded. So, well, ask Chair. Uh, Sorry, Chair, you didn't ask for a seconder, and I did put the proposal on first. Okay, well, well, I will second yeah. Mr. Boyd. Right, well, well, we we have to take we have to take our proposals first, um, but that doesn't mean we've you've got an opportunity to speak against that proposal, Councillor McGuire. Chair, uh, I I don't agree with the officer's uh, recommendation, and reason being, well, first of all, uh, the lesser test and that's the run area plan. And the rural remainder 123.2.1. It's there for a reason, and it's there because of the upper lands. It was even in the, the old uh, the planning policy, uh, which was in place before the, the PPS, you know, and it was there for a reason because of the upper lands, because of uh, even going back to, uh, to, to the 1600s, where uh, people had to live in this countryside and. The, the the way that they have to the, the topography of the ground in the upper lands is just that it's stone walls uh, an odd hopper and heads here and there but whatever about that uh, the CT uh, Y10 uh, the the speaker is quite right uh, the agent is quite right there is nothing in CT Y10 to say uh, give any meters uh, from uh, a farm yard, it does. Uh, in my eyes, it does cluster. Uh, if you look at it from, if you're going along the uh, the Ahamore Road, you can see clearly it clusters. If you're going along the Aden Ray Road, you can see it. If you're on the Scrahy Road, you can see it. And that's really the only roads that you can see it from. Because if you're coming down the Scrahy Road, uh, and I'm going to integration as well on this. If you're going to go down the Scrahy Road and you look up and that two story well, it's not it's not going to be in the skyline because behind that again is the Crowley Hill, uh, the hill between uh, Kilater and uh, the Hanahu side. So that is actually the skyline, the, the Crowley Hill. If you're coming along from Kilater along the Ahamore Road, you have the mountains in Scrahy as well, which are way above. You're actually going down the hill. Uh, on the Hamor Road, this is just off the Hamor Road, it's just on to the left. When you start going down the hill and you're down less than a quarter of a mile, uh, that's when you come on it. So, you know, that, that road is straight down, straight down and back up to get onto the Scrahy Road. So, anyone that knows it will know what I'm talking about. And if you're coming along there, the only skyline you'll see is the Scrahy Mountains. So, for me uh, and for every, anyone that knows the site and has taken interest, it does integrate. So for that reason, Chair, uh, I, I will be making a counter proposal if indeed uh, this one of counter boys doesn't get through. Thanks, Councillor McGuire. Um, Councillor Boyd, you're and, and apologies for the mix up in relation to um, the proposal not being seconded. It, Councillor McGuire, that um, have his name on the chat box, um, priority, anybody indicating that they would second the proposal. Um, is there anybody else wishes to speak um, in relation to the, the application in front of us? Chair, just to say that's okay. I understand that the technology here is difficult for us all to cope with. I have no problem with that. Yeah. Um, so, is there, see, before we go to a vote, um, is there, is there anybody wishes to speak or make a comment? No, Maura, um, because um, it's obvious that we're not going to have a unanimous decision on this one, I'm going to ask you for you to take a recorded vote. But we've got a proposal from um, Councillor Boyd, which is seconded by Councillor Mooney, to accept the officer's recommendation to refuse. Okay, members, I'll just run through the roll call then. Councillor Jason Barr? Yes. 
Councillor John Boyle. Or, uh, Alderman Alan Breslin. Against. Yeah. Councillor Angela Dobbins. Against Maura. Councillor Paul Gallagher. Against. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that, Councillor Gallagher. Against. Thank you. Councillor Sean Harkin. Abstain. Councillor Christopher Jackson. Uh, against. Councillor Dan Kelly. Against Mora. Thank you. Alderman Keith Kerrigan. Against Mara. Thank you. Alderman Hilary McClintock. Against. Thank you. Councillor Keir Maguire. Against Mara. Councillor Philip McKinney. He's gone. Councillor Aileen Mellon, his apologies. And Councillor Sean Mooney. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that, Councillor Mooney. Okay. So, Chair, that's two for uh, one abstention and the rest against. President, thank you. Thank you, Maura. Um, so, that proposal fails. I'm going to go back to Councillor McGuire now, who had advocated the data counter proposal. Um, Councillor McGuire. Yeah, Chair, in light of what I said earlier, I propose that we do not uh, support the officer's recommendation and we approve the application. Councillor McGuire, I know you, you, you alluded to it earlier, but um, can we be specific in relation to the plan and the reasons? Yeah, Chair, uh, started off with uh, Mr. Plan one two three point two point one lesser test CTY ten. Uh, I do believe it does cluster, and again, it doesn't st state on CTY ten that there uh, is a, a defined uh, meters from uh, the sheds. Um, plus, we don't know if the application applicant has any uh, plans to uh, to uh, develop that farm any further. But that's that's another thing. And also the uh, the integration and uh, CTY thirteen, CTY fourteen. You can take them actually together. But uh, as I say, if you're coming down the critical viewpoints, if you're coming down the Scraggy Road, and you do look up, even it is a two story house, even if it was a three story house, uh, the backdrop of the Crowley's Hill is going to be on the ridge line. It's going to be on the this the skyline. So uh, the house isn't. Isn't going to make any difference. Also, if you're coming the other direction, if you're coming along the Ahamor Road from the Calither side, uh, you won't see the house either until you're actually nearly on top of it, less than a quarter of a mile down the Ahamor Road before you'll see it. And again, you look over and uh, it's the backdrop of the Scraggy Mountain, even right al along to Bessie Bell, will all be in the skyline. Uh, so, them would be the critical viewpoints. And for them reasons, uh, I would that we support the uh, that we do not accept the officer's recommendation and we approve the application. Thank you. Um, can I bring in Alderman Kerrigan? Uh, Chair, uh, thanks for allowing me in. Chair, I would be minded of seconding uh, Councillor McGuire's proposal. Uh, again, I would support the points that he's raised there, and in particular, knowing the area as as. I'm looking at it from one side, and and Councillor McGuire is looking at it from the other side. Know the area, and as I say, with with Creeley's Hill and all the rest, and and the topography of the la land there, chair, it won't technically be in the skyline just with the, with the hills and that. But chair, as well as that, you know, referring back, chair, just to the previous application, chair, that that nice stack mature hedging or uh, those trees that we had down the Stabane Road, you've a different bit of ground up on here, chair. And has been uh, stated by the by the agent. You, you know, it's more a lot of a lot of wee one bushes and all the rest up in there. If you're looking trees, it's going to be planted trees for the forestry, as in that sort of part of the world. 
So it's uh, you're not going to have the the same nice big mature hedging and, and fixed boundaries in that location. So, Jar, I would be minded of seconding uh, Councillor McGuire. And thanks very much. Okay, um, thank you, Alderman Kagan. Just just to be clear, I know you've said you're minded to, to second it. Have you seconded I'm it? I'm taking it, Chair. I am taking it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, so we have a proposal from Councillor McGuire, seconded by Alderman Kerrigan, and to go to not accept the officer's recommendation and approve the the application in front of us. Um, before I take a vote or any further comments, I'm going to ask. Um, I, I know Suzanne has asked to come on to clarify conditions. Um, Suzanne, are you there? Yep. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I just um the proposal. On to clarify if there's any specific conditions. Um, as officers, we would probably recommend clearly a proposed landscaping scheme and a proposed details of levels and any uh, ex, you know excavation because I know the agent has indicated that they intend to excavate down into the site. And the other issue is a ridge height condition. We would normally attach an eight meter ridge height condition for a two story dwelling. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, Councillor McGuire is. As a proposer, um, are you content with those conditions? Chair, um, like I said earlier, I, I don't think you have to dig down into the site because it's not going to be prominent. You know, it's, it's not going to be prominent up in the area. And I, I'd give the reasons uh, that there's no need for planting, you know. And uh, again, if you're coming up the Eden Ray Road, which I forgot to say, you, you have the backdrop of the Carrigal Holton Forest. And behind it, and letter ground. So, I don't think it, it it needs any planting, to be honest, uh, or uh, or excavations uh, dug down into the site. But I'd be happy with the other conditions, you know, to meet road service and, and environmental health and stuff like that. Just for clarity, it's um, just the standard conditions. There's no additional conditions in relation to the landscaping or the levels. Okay. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Um, are there any further comments, members, before we go to a vote? No. Um, Maura, can I hand over to yourself? Or no, members, just a noise into this one. Um, can I ask members, is there anybody that wishes to change their vote? Or is it going to be some already? Yeah, I'm going to be against this time. Right. Um, so everybody's. I'm going to go to Mara because um, Quinzer boy can't help himself. Okay, no problem, Chair. I'll just run through the voting list again. So this is a proposal not to accept the officer's recommendation to refuse um, LA eleven two thousand and twenty OC six two three. Councillor Jason Barr. Councillor Jason Barr. Sorry, Mara. Sorry. Thank you. Councillor John Boyle. Sorry, Councillor Boyle, I didn't hear you. Hey, Mara, say that again. Against. Thank you. Alderman Alan Breslin. For. Councillor Angela Dobbins. For. Councillor Paul Gallagher. Councillor Gallagher. For, got that. Councillor Sean Harkin. For. Got that, thank you. Councillor Christopher Jackson. For. Councillor Dan Kelly. For, Mara. Thank you. Alderman Keith Kerrigan. For, Mara. Alderman Hilary McClintock. Four. Thank you. Councillor Kim McGuire. Sorry, Mara. Four. Please. Yeah, got that. Councillor Philip McKinney. Still not on. No. And Councillor Sean Minnie. Against, Mara. Okay. So that's two against, and the rest are four. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Maura. Um, so 
I, my apologies, because I, I do see that um, Consul Dobbins has indicated that she wishes they add a condition. Um, I, I, I know that um, we've already voted on on the application, and I can't, we, we can't add a condition now. Um, but Angela, if you want it, to come on, I no, it's it's attach okay. it as an informative or something. It's it's okay, chair. It's fine. The um the conditions it was the stand it was in the standard conditions was we was on that. So no, I'm happy. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Angela. Um, so members, that application has been approved. Um, so members, we've um we've reached the two hour mark. Um, so I'm going to propose that we take a ten minute break. Um, it's just eleven minutes past. Um. Four at the at the moment. Um, we're going to start in twenty one minutes past four. So um, I'll see you all back on in ten minutes. Thanks, members.
Okay, members, um, are we content they resume the meeting? Yeah. Um, members, our next application is Appendix 5, um, LA 11, 2019, 0521 F, and it's the erection of seven classroom primary school at the lands northeast of Strahan's Road, um, Straban. And it's Sarah that's going to take us through these. Sarah, you ready? Yes, Chair, thank you. Just going to try and put it on the slideshow here. Sarah, just before you start, I noticed that there is that big grey box. It was there, it was there where Maliki was doing this as well. That's much better, thank you. Okay, so this is item 5, LA 11, 2019, 0521, and the proposal is for the erection of a new seven classroom primary school and single nursery unit, including hard and soft play areas, car parking, landscaping, access arrangements from Strahan's Road and associated site works. And the site is located at lands northeast to the junction of Strahan's Road and Castletown Road in Straban, and the recommendation is to approve. So this is the site location plan. The site is located outside the settlement limit of Straban as defined in the Straban area plan, and it is therefore located in the countryside. The site is approximately 1.2 hectares in size and located at the junction of Strahan's Road and Castletown Road. This is an aerial photograph of the site and the spatial NA map, which shows the extent of the development <coughs> limits as outlined. And so the site forms part of a larger agricultural field and is undeveloped agricultural land. East of the site is the defined settlement limit boundary at 5 Great Northern Road and Straban Bypass. North, south and west of the site are undeveloped agricultural lands and further south is Council's Recycling Centre. And you will see from the aerial photograph that there is housing also located further north at the settlement limit boundary at Castletown. So this is the plan taken from the Straban area plan and the settlement limit is the black dotted line and the site is shown there coloured in red. The site is in close proximity to the settlement limit to the east of the site along Straban bypass. The photograph on the left is a photograph of the application site and the photograph on the right hand side is a view of the site from Strahan's Road in which there would be a new footway provided along the verge and frontage of the site. This is a photograph and view east of the application site and as stated before, the development limit is just located on the boundary of the, the field there and the, at the A5 Straban bypass is just on the other side of that hedge row. So in terms of consultees, DFI Rivers considered a drainage assessment submitted and of no objection subject to a condition requiring a final drainage assessment to be submitted detailing the drainage network design. NA Water advised that an Article 154 requisition for a foil and storm sewer solution to serve the site is being progressed by the applicant and NI Water. DFI roads have no objections subject to conditions. Environmental Health considered a contamination assessment, shadow flicker from the nearby turbine, noise associated with the proposal and sources of nearby noise, and an air quality assessment have all been assessed and they have no objections subject to conditions. SES. DERA Water Management Unit, Natural Environment Division and Regulation Unit have no objections. Historic Monuments Unit have no objections and Lots Agency have no objections. So in terms of representations, three letters of support were received from an MLA and two councillors. The correspondence confirms their support for the new school facility and state that there is a growing demand for Irish medium education. It states that there are, the existing facilities are substandard and consider that the catchment area for the school demonstrates that the specialised nature and importance of improving access to Irish medium education. The school is a priority investment for the Department of Education. The selected site is the optimum location for the new school and it is considered that the design and geographical context will have a positive impact on the delivery of Irish medium education and it will deliver, the delivery of the proposal will align with the programme for government outcomes. 
So supporting information was submitted from the agent throughout the processing of the application. And this was to demonstrate why the site was considered by the Education Authority to be an acceptable site, and also to demonstrate that the site outside the limits would be considered acceptable. The information submitted included a land availability assessment and addendums, which considered the condition of the existing facilities, information on the site selection and searches carried out an initial feasibility study for a new site, information on funding and the investment and provision of educational facilities for Straban and District, the Department of Education's requirements and specifications for the school proposal, a site assessment by the agent on lands with settlement limit, information on project on the project programme and timing matters and delays, a letter of support from the principal of the Gale School, a letter of support from Corla and the Gale School Acta, which is the representative body for Irish medium education, and a letter of support from the Department of Education's Director of Investment and Infrastructure. This is just a photograph to show the existing condition on the existing site and the facilities on the existing site are porta cabins of a temporary nature and are in a state of disrepair. The existing buildings do not meet the building control regulations and the school site itself lacks sufficient space, including resource areas, offices, storage space, ICT and adequate toilet and hygiene facilities. This is just another photograph to show the internal condition of the temporary porta cabins and you will see that there is dampness and rainwater penetrates through the ceilings and the floor finishes are also in a poor condition. So in terms of the proposal, this is the proposed site layout. It will involve construction of a new single storey seven classroom primary school and a single storey nursery unit. It also includes hard and soft outdoor play spaces and staff and visitor parking. And this is the landscaping plan which clearly indicates the hard and soft outdoor play spaces and landscaping buffer planting on the site's boundaries. The support and information submitted advice that the new school will provide for between 176 to 205 pupils and the nursery unit will accommodate 26 pupils. The buildings and associated play spaces and car parking are designed to conform to space standards set out in the Department of Education's handbook. Vehicular access will be taken from Strahan's Road in the form of a separate entrance and egress. Internally, the road is one way and provides access to parking, servicing and separate pickup and set down areas. This is the elevations of the proposed primaries and the elevations and floor plans of the knee skull building. And this is the agent's 3D images of the proposed buildings on the site which you will see are single storey in height and orientated to front onto Strahan's Road and the design uses a simplistic design. The primary school is less than 6 metres in height and the play school is 4.5 metres in height. The buildings are finished in a self-coloured render, timber panelling, steel insulated roof cladding and grey window frames. This is just another 3D image provided by the agent of the buildings on the site. So in terms of assessment of policy regarding the principle of the development, this site is located outside the settlement limit of Straban and therefore located in the countryside. The Straban area plan states that non-residential development will be considered on the needs of the local community, the proximity of alternative urban locations and the circumstances of each case. So this site is located in close proximity to the fine settlement just west of the limits which runs along the A5 transport route. The northern extent of the settlement limit is a few fields from the site and defined by housing at Castle Grange. The specific circumstances of this case, the need for the development and consideration of other urban alternative sites has been provided in this information and considered by officers. In considering PPS 21 policy CTY1 advises that permission will be granted for a non-residential development, including for a necessary community facility to serve the rural population. The agent considers that the proposal goes beyond this policy test as the development will serve a wider geographical area and wider population than that specified in the policy. There are no other Irish medium education facilities within 15 miles of the site and the nearest is located 15 miles away at Aidan Moor in Derry. The catchment maps provided demonstrate that pupils are drawn from an extensive geographical area, both urban and rural. And a letter of support from the principal 
confirms the geographical area extends to Castle Derg, whereby the existing Gale Skull is a feeder school to Neeskull, Nigeria and Castle Derg. So in terms of the site's assessment, the land's availability assessment was carried out to demonstrate that there were no other alternative sites available within the settlement limit to provide for the specific circumstances of this proposal. Each of the sites identified were assessed by officers and the detail of these is set out in the report. A sequential assessment of alternative sites has been carried out in accordance with the Straban area plan and the weight afforded to each is a finely balanced consideration. None of the sites identified within the settlement limit are suitable or acceptable in planning terms to accommodate the proposal. The locational needs of the site to provide for Irish medium education in the western part of Straban is a consideration in terms of need for the specialised type of education. Consideration was given to those alternative sites which have constraints such as those which were used, which were used for existing open space and located in a floodplain. Some sites had top topography issues in terms of restricted access and turning. Some sites were sown for housing or sown for industry or occupied by other business uses. Other sites were constrained by the A5 protected route. And there were those that have existing uses, including retail, those that have received planning permission for other development or are pending plan applications. Officers would agree that the land's availability assessment has adequately assessed the site suitability within the limits that could be developed and consider that all other material co considerations and the circumstances of this case and site specific development need should be taken into account in the assessment of the application. So in terms of the material considerations, officers consider that appropriate weight can be afforded to the following. The site at Strahan's Road is in a strategic location located off the A5. It is adjacent to the settlement limit and as such is the next sequentially preferable and available site outside the settlement limit. The location of the site in the west ward of Straban is fundamental to serve the needs of Irish medium education, considering the catchment area of the existing school and accessibility to pupils at ne the Nee School in Castle Derg. And th this is important for protecting the future sustainability of Irish medium education. The interrelationship and location of the proposed site at Strahan's Road to the existing school community to which it serves is an important material consideration and that it will contribute to enhance and protect sustainable communities for the future of Irish medium education. The material considerations of the application demonstrate the proposal will deliver and improve the social well-being of existing pupils and staff by providing fit for, a fit for purpose education facility. There are other material considerations of the application and whilst these would not bear determining weight individually, they have been also taken into account in assessment of the application. And these include the development need and the investment in Irish medium education, provision of a fit for purpose learning environment with appropriate access to facilities. The existing facilities are substandard and pose a health risk and do not meet disability standards. The temporary buildings are in a poor state of disrepair with inadequate welfare facilities for staff and pupils, inadequate play facilities, and there are also safety issues over the access and health and safety risk to children. The existing site cannot be improved to provide suitable education facilities to the required Department of Education standards, and it is also located in a floodplain. So in terms of the proposed site at Strahan's Road, this site will meet the Department of Education's requirements and deliver a high quality learning environment fit for purpose. It will provide adequate play facilities. There will be adequate servicing with a safe bus route within the site and pick up and drop off areas. The proposal will be a significant betterment and a health and safety improvement, which will have a positive impact on mental health and wellbeing. A parent facility will likely increase enrolment and promote the long term sustainability of Irish medium education. This is a specialist type of education which has been supported by the local community. So in summary of the principle of the development, officers have taken into account the SPPS, Straban Area Plan and PPS 21 and have also considered all the material considerations and supporting information submitted.
This is a finely balanced decision and considering all factors, officers consider it has been demonstrated that there are overriding reasons this proposal is essential and there are exceptional circumstances demonstrated for the proposal to be considered as an exception to prevailing plan and policy. The site at Strahan's Road is the next best site sequentially for provision of the specialised Irish medium education. So there are also other policy considerations in terms of CTY 13 integration and design of buildings. There will be limited views of the site, and but the buildings have been sensitively designed to ensure that it integrates into the landscape. The new buildings in the site will not result in a buildup of development or damage the rural character. The siting, layout, scale and design will not mar the distinction between town and countryside. In terms of PPS2, there will be no impact on European sites or other natural heritage interests. In terms of PPS6, Historic Environment Division considered a programme of archaeological work submitted and of no objections. And considering flood risk, a drainage assessment was submitted and DFI rivers also have no objections subject to con So this is the road access plan for the site and officers have considered the proposal in accordance with PPS3. As stated earlier, there will be a separate entrance and egress, an allocated pickup and set down area, as the ball displays of 4.5 by 80 metres have been provided at the exit, a three metre footway cycleway will be provided across the site frontage and will tie into the footway at the Great Northern Bypass Junction and street lighting will also be provided along the extent of the footway. By roads has no objections and this is just a photograph showing the extent of the existing verge in which a new footway will be provided to link to Straban Bypass. So in summary, the, in terms of the SPPS Straban area plan and PPS21, it is considered that there are overriding reasons the development is essential and there are exceptional circumstances demonstrated for officers to consider that the proposal can be treated as an exception to policy. This is including the accessibility of the site, the proximity to the urban location, the consideration of alternative sites, the identified need for the development, it has been demonstrated the site is the next best site for provision of the school and that as this is a finely balanced decision and the principle of locating the new Irish medium school outside the settlement limit on this specific site is therefore considered acceptable and the recommendation is to approve. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Sarah. Um, members, I know I had a request um, this morning from Councillor Michaela Boyle um, they speak in relation to this application. Um, she did indicate that she was having difficulty with her, um, with her internet connection so, and I don't see her online. So I'm going to move straight on unless Michaela's there and I just must her. No. I'm going to move um, on and I'm going to invite I'm Sam McKee, the agent, and Mara Nadahara, um, the Gale School, School Principal, um, they address the committee. Um, you are very welcome, and you have five minutes between you. Um, they make your representations. Go ahead. Thank you, Chair, uh, and thank you, members of the committee, for the opportunity to this afternoon. Uh, I'm joined today by Mara Nadahara, Principal of Gale School E. Dorkrata. We welcome the Council planning team's recommendation for approval of this planning application and the detailed committee report which has informed the recommendation. Uh, all statutory consultees have responded with no objections and the three and three letters of support have been received to the application and no letters of objection from any third parties. The existing school buildings located in the Ballycombin estate are of temporary modular construction and long past their intended lifespan. The existing accommodation in respect to both school buildings and play space falls significantly short of the requirements of the Department of Education standards for a seven class based primary school. The ongoing repair and maintenance of the existing modular buildings is financially unviable and the school is in pressing need for new fit for purpose accommodation. The proposed development of a new school facility will provide this high quality and fit for purpose accommodation that the staff and pupils of the Gale School deserve. Moira will share some this new development would mean for the school. <clears throat> in addition to the educational benefits of this development, the construction process represents an investment of approximately 3.4 million into the local economy, creating approximately 50 construction jobs over the duration of the build period, which is projected to be 15 months. The committee report sets out in some detail how the provisions of the Strand Area Plan and PPS 21 
and all relevant material considerations have been weighed in finding this site on the outer edge of the settlement limit suitable as a new location for the Gale School. The report confirms that the proposed scheme is compliant with all other local and regional planning policy. The proposed site is located in close proximity to the settlement limit and critically the school's core catchment, which will assist in the school's long-term sustainability. Taking cognizance of the site's location, careful consideration has been given to the detailed design, as well as the materials and finishes proposed for the development. The scale and massing of the buildings are appropriate for the site's location and assist alongside a high quality planting scheme in integrating the, de the development within its setting, ensuring that this will not appear unduly prominent in the local landscape. If successful, it is the intention of the school and education authority to commence development on site as soon as possible, subject to charge of conditions and post planning statutory approvals. I will hand over to Moira to provide the committee with some more information <coughs> on what this development would mean for the current and future pupils and staff of the Gale Squad. So, I can hear you, August Awal, Kishid, or Michael, or just as in Jesha, or Bort Dula Lorca. So, ever since its inception in Straban, there's been massive community support for Irish medium education. Over the years, the founding committees of both the Nice School and the Gale School had to raise funds to run both schools. The generosity of these volunteer committee members should never be forgotten. Draws, raffles, door to door collections were a regular pattern in these people's lives for many, many years. But these endeavours would have been pointless without the generosity and good heart of the people of Straban. And that, let me not forget the very generous American who, over the period of two years, gave us a substantial amount of money to keep us afloat. However important finances are, you can't have a school without children. The rapid growth of our school over the years is evidence of the support and faith that people have and had in us. We are still fondly called the wee Irish school and quite often told the wee school's doing great down there. It's as if our school are the pets of the town and everyone delights and takes pleasure and pride in our achievements. Indeed from, the start of our, indeed, from the start, our school has been linked to the community and we continue to try to strengthen and build these relationships at all levels. One can only imagine the joy and delight that would be felt by our own town as this project has moved on. People in Straban helped us to get where we are now and they rightly should rejoice in the progression of our new school. I'm sure you'd be aware of the standard and you've seen the photographs of the standard of the accommodation in which our pupils are taught and our staff work. <coughs> To say it's substandard is putting it mildly, to be honest. Some of the classrooms are 35 plus years. Not many pupils have mushrooms growing outside their classroom walls, dark patches of damp on the ceilings, and the odd drip falling on top of them. The toilets in the toilet block have been known to freeze in the cold mornings. Holes in the outside walls appear as if by magic. And in the past, we've actually had to ask the children to keep it in the volley or watch the walls when they're playing football in case they hit the ball too hard and they leave another hole. That said, I always say a school isn't about a building. A school is about the warmth of the pastoral care, the respect for all that is taught and nurtured, and the standard of education and the joy that the children experience. Undoubtedly, this is all evidenced in our school. I have to admit, and I always say we have the hardest working staff. Making Irish medium education lags behind as regards provision of teaching resources. But what do our staff do? Our staff spend massive amounts of time in planning and preparation. This added work plus teaching in classrooms are, that are substandard might be a deterrent for some, but not for our staff. Our staff continue to drive the children to be the best they can and to help create a world of mutual respect. We all look forward to the day when we can teach in a school that is warm, where you don't have to go outside to a different building to go to the toilet and it normally rains. Our staff deserve this and so do our pupils and their families. Finally, we feel this news will facilitate the growth in our school. BBC reported yesterday that there's been a 20% increase in Irish medium education in the Belfast area in the past five years. I believe our new school will open the Irish medium door for many more children in the town, thus giving them the gift of bilingualism. Finally, I'd like to thank you again for giving me this opportunity to address you today. You've absolutely no idea what this recommendation means to me or the pupils, family, staff, governors, past and present of our whole school community. On behalf of everyone, I respectfully request that the committee endorse the recommendation for approval. Gurr Magath. Gurr Um Councillor Kelly, your question? Chair, I, I don't have a question, but I have a comment. Thank you. I, I, yeah. In relation yeah. to the applicant, or do you want yeah. to hold it off the... Well, it, it doesn't matter, I can take it now. Go on ahead, Councillor Kelly. Yeah. Well, Chair, um, I mean, it's all been said. It's been a very comprehensive report, and 
I just want to take the opportunity um, to congratulate uh, Sam and, and Mara really for um, and both their teams. Um, this is I know this proposal has been a, a long, long many years as, as Mara has outlined in the process. You know for the state of the art New Gale School and and Nee School, uh, and there's there's been as, as Mara has said you know uh, that whole process of lobbying and clearing statutory hurdles. Uh, but this marks. Uh, a key milestone and the beginning of a new chapter, and there's no doubt, doubt about that for the for the Irish language community uh, in Stravan. And uh, the work that has got in to get to this point is, is just it's been phenomenal. Uh, you know, having read the case file, is clear every I has been dotted and every T has been crossed, um, and the officers have, have really worked uh, to make sure that this this proposal, the state of the art new school, is is is, is brought in uh, to fruition as soon as possible. You know, in due course, you know, I'd be happy to propose the officer recommendation. But for now, uh, I just want to, as I say, you know, congratulate uh, Mara, uh, Sam, and the teams for for the work that they've done in getting it here. You know, Kagar, just and Mara, August, Sam, and uh, Goramog. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Councillor Kelly. Um, Councillor Gallagher. Thank you, Chair, and happy to second that proposal. And I just thank for the presentation. And again, I am aware of the project and, and a lot of the hard work has been done over the years. I was very little support, may I say, but the little support from the mainstream that is, but a great support from the, the community of Saban. I think that it's quite clearly proven around the evidence of need. And uh, I very much uh, welcome this proposal as previous councillor says it's uh, a, a top of the range application all the dots i uh, got it and the t's crossed and all, all that and that that's testimony to the to the volunteerism that goes on and the dedication that goes on on this project so very much happy to support this i am very much welcome the sustainability of the Irish language within the Stavan area and the and the future well done um now, just before I go on, because there's a few more indicated speakers, um, we're still at questions, um, De Mora and Sam. So um, I know there's a proposal which has been seconded. I'm just going to note that for um, the moment when we can, we'll come back to these. But at this stage, um, I've got um, Councillor Dobbins and Councillor Barr. Um, they, they come in. Um, Councillor Dobbins, as as yours in relation to is it a question to Mara or Sam or have you is it a comment in relation to the, the wider application? Yeah. Chair, it's not a question and I don't think there's very many people ask questions for this. Yeah. It was so intricate, so if you'd allow me to go on. Um, yeah, well well can I can I ask can I, can I ask first just um Councillor Barr, can you indicate if you get a question? Uh no chair, again just a comment. Yeah, no, just I was just double checking. Um go on ahead, Angela. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, I would like to um, commend everyone, uh, including our planning officer there. Um, it was very aptly summed up as um, it was definitely fit for purpose, uh, a learning environment with appropriate access to facilities. And, you know, I wish they were all like that. I wish that all plans coming to us were exactly that. And I would like to congratulate um, Maura and Sam the school is more you're right the school is definitely not about the building uh, it is about the people behind it the human beings being from the youngest to the oldest and that that's the support that's the backbone of any school so um congratulations because uh, i know this is going through thanks councillor Barr. and again just to echo the, what the previous councillors have said there uh, congratulations to everyone and getting to where this is today from the principal from the staff to the the staff was there before to the pupils the past pupils um to all their parents and parents and families to get this as i say to where this is today absolutely brilliant to see this uh coming to fruition uh so well done and very happy to support this thank you okay um there's no indicated there, there hasn't been any questions mara or sam but um at, at this stage i would Give you an opportunity if you want to come in and reply to anything that's been said. Um, it's up to yourselves. Uh, Mara, maybe you want to say, I mean, for me, uh, we're, we're just the agents and, and we absolutely echo the comments. It's all about the, the school and all about the pupils and the staff. So 
Amora, I don't know if you want to say a few words. No, I suppose I'm just delighted that we have so much support from everybody. I know that Sarah has done a lot of work. Her presentation was excellent. Uh, and I know that Sam and his team and everybody that's involved in the project management board have worked really, really hard to get us to this point, as have, as I've already said, as has everybody that's been involved with the various committees uh, throughout since 1994 when the Nice School started and then 1997 whenever the Gale School started. We wouldn't be where we are today without the support of all those people who, who have helped us along the way. Um, so I am very, very grateful um, to everybody, as is the whole school community. So thank you. Um, thank you. Um, I'm going to move on now to questions to the officer, and I'm assuming I'm going to take it that there's no questions because um, everybody seemed to be indicating that they were content. So if there's no questions, um, I'm going to hand over to Councillor Kelly. Councillor Kelly. Yeah, Chair, just uh, as I've stated before, uh, and it's already seconded, you know, to propose the officer recommendation as laid out in the report. Thank you. Let's say happy to second the Chair. Okay, um, members, I'm going to take that as unanimous, unless anybody, I've just, Alderman McClintock has indicated in the chat box um, that there's no issues with the the proposal. Um, so I'm assuming this is unanimous, members, unless anybody speaks, indicates now. Okay, um, so that's that, that, that proposal, um, proposal from Councillor Kelly. Second, of the Councillor Gallagher to accept the officer's recommendation to approve um, is unanimous. So that application's been approved. Um, may who? Um, Congratulations. So, members, that's um, as we alluded to at the, at the beginning of the meeting, item number four has been moved in, in the, on, on the schedule um, because the delayed information highlighted some personal information. So I'm going to require a proposal. Um, it's it's in relation to LA 11 2020 I propose that, Chair John Boyle. The proposal we go into confidential? Yes. Yes. Chair yes. Sean Rooney. Okay, thank you. Um, so can I wait for um, IT to let us know 